but uh, I'm Tim Vadney with Wright Pierce, the project manager for this project. So we... Uh, Mike Doobie. Mike Doobie. Mike, I asked Mike to come here tonight as a supervisor of the wastewater treatment plant. If there's some technical issues that he can answer, uh, how they've been operating the plant, how they've uh, nursed the plant along at this point, uh, he was here. I also wanted to note that behind us is uh, Jennifer Hale, my deputy director, and Tim, uh, Mike Curry, sorry, with uh, Wright Pierce. Mike's been uh, Tim's right-hand man in putting together a lot of these numbers. So uh, with that, we'll let the show Tim have the floor. So uh, here's a brief overview of what I'm planning on talking about today. The plan is to keep it pretty brief and to facilitate questions that you may have on, on the report that, that we put out on the, on the facility plan. So we did introductions already. I'm going to give a brief overview of the treatment facility and its history and the history of upgrades there. I'll talk a little, little bit about what the drivers were for the facility plan that brought us to here and then some of the findings and recommendations of that facility plan and ultimately some of the phasing and costs of various upgrades there that, that, that are necessary. So, like many industries, wastewater engineering is laden with acronyms. So I put this this slide in to basically touch upon some of the main ones we'll see. WWTF, wastewater treatment facility. When we talk about flow to the facility, it's usually an MGD or million gallons per day. When we talk about the load or pollutants that are in the flow coming to the wastewater, it's usually in one, primarily in one of two forms, BOD, which is biochemical oxygen demand, and TSS, or total suspended solids. Both of these play a role in the capacity of the plant. So a little background of the plant. I believe it's one of the oldest continuously operating plants in the state. I think maybe only Durham has you beat. So, and the beach drove that in the 1930s when the original plant was upgraded. It's been upgraded since then a number of times. Uh, the large ones are presented here. The, the last, the most recent comprehensive upgrade was the 1974 upgrade, which built most of the buildings that you see in purple up there. This is this chart, this aerial photo is, is color, color coded by, approximately by age. So anything that's in kind of that greenish teal color is post-1986. Anything before that is 1974 and before. And some of the stuff there dates to well before 94 as well. But most of the equipment in the purple areas is from the 74 upgrade. So a little bit about facility planning. What is a facility plan? Basically, we do these for communities that know they have a need at the plant and they want to help categorize or understand what that need is. And the, the, the town has known that, you know, we got this resource there, probably one of the biggest dollar value resources in the town. To construct that plant new nowadays would be in the order of 40 to 50 million easily. We're building the plant of similar size in Exeter right now, and the total project cost is in the vicinity of 50 million. So uh, faci facility plans are to assess the existing condition of the facility, look at flows and loads, look at any growth projections, and kind of weave that into a plan for moving forward, for keeping the plant up to speed and upgraded and, and working the way it needs to for the reliability that you need from it. Uh, and yeah, lay out that upgrades in a schedule for it over the coming years. So some of the you know, main findings of the, of the facility plan, there's basically two types of need at the treatment plant. There's the replacement of aging infrastructure, which is both the process equipment, like the pumps, the piping, the fans, the blowers, the diffusers, the mixers, the chemical pumps, and the building systems, the buildings which house this equipment, whether it's ventilation, like Mr. Zanoy spoke to, or whether it's other building systems like masonry and roofs and things like that. Uh, and then the, the second need, kind of overarching need there is the capacity concern, concerns due to growth within town. Not just residential growth, but the, the growth that occurs when more people come to the beach and the growth of industrial users as well. And that comes in, in, in terms of increasing flows in gallons per day, but more importantly for Hampton right now in terms of load. That's what's in the sewage that's coming to the plant that needs to be treated. So. When we do these facility plans, we typically try to triage the needs of the plant into phases. And so we've done that here with a phase one, and this is the high priority immediate kind of some, some life safety, some code issues, and, and the highest priority equipment needs. Uh, that would be more your more immediate, immediate project. And then phase two, which is the stuff that's probably five plus years out, and then phase three, which is kind of further out than that. And the way these really work is as you progress through the next decade that phase three stuff becomes 
phase one stuff as it continues to age. So it's kind of a cycle of upgrading equipment and, and, and how that plays out. So a little bit I want to talk about now is some specifics on the recommended phase one upgrade. And uh, we'll get into more detail on each of these, but the overview is multiple system upgrades at the, at the facility. The total estimated project cost for phase one total project is 13.8. Uh, a potential schedule, if the town, depending on how the town decides to move forward to this, I know there's warrant article approval and your approval and all that, uh, and needs to go into it as well, uh, would be design it in the coming year and start construction, bid it in, in 2019 for construction there uh, thereafter. So what is in the phase one upgrade? And this is all obviously in the facility plan, but I realize it's also a pretty dense report. Uh, <laughs> So it's improvements to the, and we'll talk about each of these in more detail shortly, but improvements to the headworks, the aeration tanks, the primary clarifiers and thickeners, the plant water and septage receiving facilities, the sludge pumps and uh, polymer systems, some improvements to the operation building and maintenance garage, and the SCADA system upgrade. Now what SCADA is, is it stands for Supervisory Control and Data Acquisition. It's basically the computer system that runs the equipment at the plant. A uh, little bit on the headworks upgrade. So there's this is a very challenging space. It's a space where the ventilation is not in great shape, and that that, that accelerates the, the rate of corrosion on the equipment, and also cor corrosion of the concrete that's in those spaces. Uh, there's some walkways that really need to get replaced. There's some equipment, some HVAC that needs to get replaced, and uh, basically other worn out equipment that has reached that it, the end of its anticipated useful life. Just to be for the for the audience, just to be clear, the headworks is literally where all the effluent comes into the plant, comes in from the force mains, uh, uh, from the Church Street pump sp station, uh, also comes down Tide Mill Road, and we have a what we call a northeast corridor uh, collection main. Uh, so this is literally raw effluent. Uh, where it comes that's a great the plant. great thing to touch on. I should have said that. It's yeah, the, all the raw sewage comes through this. It's got a mechanical screen that screens debris from the wastewater, and it's got a grit removal system that settles out the sand and larger rock particle particles. So does this have to do with the um, the, the uh, line that goes across the marsh? It pumps to this to this part of the facility. So this would include. Replacing that? No, that no, is a separate. No. That's, that's separate. a separate one. Yeah. Okay. This is all within the treatment plant site. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. So, aeration tank upgrade. This would be one of the ones that would increase the treatment facility capacity. Uh, again, to to replace equipment that has reached the end of its useful life. To provide some redundancy, because right now, as uh, Mr. Zanoya touched upon, it, there's one aeration train. This would provide the redundancy of having two, so you could take one down for maintenance, which right now you don't entirely have that flexibility, especially during the summer when you need all tanks online. And also, this provide emergency generation, gener power generation facilities for the aeration system. Right now, your aeration system ha is not on the generator at the plant, so the power goes out. You cannot provide the dissolved oxygen you need to make the aeration tanks do their biological treatment of the wastewater. And the, the town has done a great job kind of, they had they wired in a temporary generator hookup, so they have the ability, ability during a prolonged power outage to hopefully, if you can find a sufficiently sized generator, to get that there and hook it up, but that has a lead time too. But it is a source of risk for the, for the community that that's not on standby power. Uh, that's the aeration tank upgrade. Uh, one of the drivers for that, like we touched upon a little bit, is the capacity of the plant. We are flirting with that 80% threshold. Upon exceeding that threshold, DES has ability to meddle or interfere a little bit more in growth within the town, which I think we've seen before in, in previous years. So we want to avoid that as well. So, and so we've done a ton of, you know, here's another chart of that loading. Obviously it's during the summer, you know, because the seasonal use, nature of the beach and of operations there. And we can come back to any of these as, have, as you have questions. I just want to kind of get through. And if you have any questions as we go, don't hesitate to jump in here. To One point I'd like to make on that is uh, about three years ago, actually 2014, there was a rule change. Um, in the past, we've always been controlled or our permit has been limited by how many million gallons per day you can process. In 2014, they added not only is that one of your operational criteria, but your BOD max is your operational criteria. That got 
put on everybody statewide through the Department of Environmental Services. And it's a, in direct relationship to the number of microbreweries and other types of, you know, uh, uh, loaded facilities that are being constructed around the state. We're not the only community <clears throat> that has a, a higher BOD load. I know Concord does. I know uh, well, so, yeah, Max so is huge. Summersworth just is tapped out. So everybody for the same or similar reasons. It's an important distinction that prior to that rule change, it was just 80% of your flow capacity, meaning the number of gallons of water that come in. And you guys are doing okay there. But they added to also include organic load, which you have a, you have a fairly concentrated wastewater due to the nature of the waste. So that is what that is what we're bumping into this threshold now. We we're re regularly during the summer go over, but we don't go over cons for three months consecutively, and we're trying not to. We're trying to be proactive and not allow that to occur. And another important distinction to make is that you go over the 80% threshold, the plant has an exemplary compliance record in terms, in terms of meeting its effluent permit limit. So these guys do a great job running the plant despite the high loadings that are within the design capacity. So a little more on the aeration tank upgrade. Uh, this is a little tough to see, we can zoom in here, but it, you, right now these two tanks exist in the original 74 upgrade, this area was ghosted in for additional tankage, as I recollect. Yes. So that's the most logical place for additional tankage. That's, that, that, that space has been reserved on site. Uh, that's what I had on the aeration tank process. Next, primary clarifier and gravity thickener mechanism upgrade. Uh, the mechanisms in these tanks date, I believe, to the 74 upgrade. So, and they've been turning pretty much continuously since then. I mean, this plant never shuts off. It runs 24 hours a day. And they have the ability to alternate trains, but it's still a phenomenal number of hours that are is on that equipment. Uh, so mechanisms, some concrete repair in those tanks, and some perimeter uh, rails to meet some uh, Department of Labor standards, life safety requirements. Uh, plant water and septage upgrades. So the pl they use a lot of water at the plant for wash down and other purposes. Instead of using aquarian water, they actually use their treated effluent to do that and save a bunch of money on having to buy that water. But that pumping system is in need of upgrades. And also the way that they are forced to handle septage due to some equipment and tankage limitations drives a pretty high plant water demand. So the, this upgrade will include some modifications of the septage receiving facilities, the plant water system, and some septage pumping capabilities. Uh, sludge pumps and polymer up, uh, polymer upgrades, this is just more of the same. Uh, equipment which has reached the end of its useful life and is in need of, of uh, replacement and some additional equipment redundancy with the polymer system. Uh, operations building upgrade, that's the uh, some modifications to some chemical storage areas to more further enclose them to contain some of the corrosive gases that those chemicals contain. Uh, upgrades to some heating, ventilation, and air conditioning or HVAC equipment in those spaces. And uh, so it says traditional office space, but I believe the uh, mate that was the garage, the new office space was actually in phase two, not phase one. So that was working with some existing stuff to try to carve out some office space. And we're not looking on this particular item when it comes to additional office space. We're not looking for just to give somebody a new office. The bottom picture uh, that he has on the right, that's actually Mike's desk. And behind Mike's desk is all the electrical control panels, all the switches that run uh, the plant. Um, his desk is too close to those electrical panels. Well, and it's not, a, yeah, it's so, exactly right. I didn't want to get, <laughs> but yeah, it's exact. that photo there, it's, a, it's an electric room that people are using as office space. Our architect nearly had a heart attack when he walked in there. Right. Didn't love that. It, it's, a, it's, a, it's another one of those operational, like the, like the odor control, it's an operational issue that we're trying to uh, eliminate for the safety of our employees. Yeah. Uh, maintenance garage upgrade. Now, the, the maintenance garage which is across the street from the building where Mike's office is currently. Oh, another thing I want to say before I forget, uh, if you, is anyone interested in doing a tour of the plant? Because I think that could really help demonstrate. That would be, if we could set up a tour of the plant to really show you, so it might make a lot more sense than my photos and presentation on it to see it firsthand. Uh, so the maintenance garage is one of the older structures on site. It's been repurposed over the years from many different uses, and right now it's a combination of many uses. It's a garage, it's office space, it's a lavatory, it's a mechanical process space, 
And uh, it, suffice to say, there's some code issues that exist there as well with that combination of uses. So this would address some of the larger items there and upgrade the HVAC and ventilation stuff there. Uh, I think the last one I wanted to drill down on for the phase one upgrade is the SCADA upgrade. This is that computer system that controls the plant. Uh, right now, that computer system is housed in a trailer out just outside the plant, not and uh, would not a great location for a bunch of computer equipment. Uh, part of this upgrade would be relocating that into the operations building. And another big one is to separate the treatment plants network from the town's overall network. One of the best design pra the design practices we'd like to see is see those computer systems not combined, so that the, the system at the treatment facility is more isolated and less, less vulnerable. Uh, so that's kind of all I brought to talk about, can lay out the phases and talk in a little bit more detail about phase one. I imagine you have some questions for us. I think uh, Mr. Zanoy asked some good questions about additional detail on the cost, which we can pull together too per phase. Regina? Um, so the $13.8 million for phase one, that would be, we would go bid for it ideally if it was this year and then bond it for yeah, and, we, and it would be for the whole thirteen point eight million. Well, yeah. that, or could that? That's be? been part of the. It was part of some of our discussions and right, okay. discussions earlier today. We'd like the authority to bond fifteen million. Um, that, that well covers the thirteen eight. Um, it's up to once we had that amount of money and, and they actually get into the engineering. Um, we would look, be looking for um, ways to do things. For instance, all the headworks projects. Some of them were listed phase one, phase two, and phase three. But in some respects, it, from a efficiency, uh, m more efficient methods of construction, it makes sense to do all those things at once. So um, we we literally couldn't spend all 13.8 million in, in one shot, one time. Would literally go nuts. We imagine we still have to run this plant while we make these changes. We can't really take the thing off the line. So certain things are going to have to get done at certain times. So you know we would go do some of the headwork stuff. Uh, the design and engineering for the two new aeration lagoons would probably take you know months, if not years, longer than just replacing some of the, the equipment in the headworks. Um, so then while the aeration's going on, well, we'd probably go and do other plant or other pump modifications. Different things would be combined in different orders. So it, it would, and it would, through Fred's office, would come back to the board, you know, maybe do it, two more bonds, I don't know, or, or maybe do it one, I don't know. Now that's, I have to leave that to the finance office and Fred's uh, guidance. No, I mean, I read through most of this report, and it's, uh, I think, I mean, it's a little bit scary. Like, some of the safety concerns in some, most of the buildings, it yeah. seems like. I definitely would be interested in a tour. Yeah, and, uh, I think it's a great idea. I think even, I don't know if you could set it up so that if residents wanted well, to. Well, some of the notes that I have down here to talk about at the end, if we looked at, uh, proactive steps this department would like to take would be one uh, a tour with just a limited group board of selectmen uh, maybe some key members of the budget committee if, you know or right. maybe all of them but not because it's an operational plant and um, we have air quality issues we have to go through with gas meters with you folks so it isn't like we could take 100 people so we wanted a limited tour of if you will uh, the selectmen and whoever else you sell uh, then we would open it up to tours by the public on and we recognize it would probably have to occur on a Saturday. Uh, we'd ask people to sign up through the email system or directly call in the office. We could you know, definitely take people through. There's some areas, like walking all the way down to the headworks, no. We'd, there's some trip hazards, fall hazards. It's also a very odorous area. Um, uh, we'd also like to uh, work with uh, Wright Pierce. In the past, they've prepared video presentations. Uh, they did on our 2006 project when the upper left clarifier was built. Uh, helps educate the people as to these are the things that you know we're uh, we're facing, um, and, and you know maybe it can be brought into it. 
couple of different segments. Um, we'd also, you know, we know that we have to make future, future presentations to not only the budget committee, but then ultimately the town delivery session. And if I could steal something from Mike's, he's gone and prepared, and we, we got the idea from somebody else. But these are, this is a present day situational chart with the Hampton Wastewater Treatment Plan. It's been set up, you know, with design date on the back, some photos, but also how the plant's laid out and the different aspects. We're also going to do one that says these are the areas we'd like to tack on to phase one with some of the photos, and we'll make these available for people. Um, so not everybody has to come and literally tour the plant. So um, that's where we'd like to take it, but it's based upon, if you will, the discussion, further questions from you folks, and and where you'd like to go with this. And Wright Pierce also mentioned that a way to maybe offset some of these costs would be to charge surcharges to no. larger customers. I know we have a few that we already do, but... We do. We, one of the things that, that uh, Tim mentioned is, for instance, uh, for high strength waste loads that we get, uh, right now we've set a daily limit for the amount of BOD that will come in from the high strength users. If they for some reason have a big run day and they send us more BOD, we have a way of tracking that or figuring it out, uh, we'd actually back charge them $42 per 100 pounds. Was oh, uh, yeah, I think that's a, an, that uh, Appendix A of the facility plan has a memo we wrote on uh, industrial surcharges and we included what several other area communities charge for a BOD surcharge for uh, industrial users like this to help offset some of that cost. It's a way of recovering it, but at $42 per 100 pounds, it's kind of like putting pennies in the piggy bank. Um, you know, we can o we can only good to do it, but we can only do it for so long. And 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 selecting Bean, I know, is going to raise the question, and because he's already done it by email and I've given you something uh, of about possibly addressing or revisiting how we actually charge for sewer services. That is something we can definitely work on. But it's it was not part of the. Um, when we talk about a facilities plan, it literally is the physical facility. How you want to get it done or make changes is more of what's known as a rate study, which is a whole different way of looking at things. But it is possible. Once we have phase one, two, and three done, how much more capacity does the plan have? So I, I don't want to quote you the wrong number, but uh, the adding the two additional tanks gets you pretty well out of that 80% range. And Mike Curry with my firm probably has that number more readily. We never sized, uh, in terms of those aeration tanks, we never went through a full sizing of them, but it brought you above the yeah. much further above, I think it was 30 or 40%. And I believe, and this is in the report, uh, it brought us above that 30, uh, 2037 build out. Yep. We had capacity for the projection. future, for the next planning period. I know we have a lot of area in town that still doesn't have sewer. And as we move forward, part of that area is pretty well developed. Mm -hmm. uh, Exeter Road, there's still a lot of open space. You get out on Toll Farm, Mary Bachelor Road, that, that part of that is pretty well built out. And those systems are out there old and failing. So we're going to, at some point in time, we're going to have to address at least doing that part of town. I, and I got no problem making sure that we, you know, we, we take care of the system, but I want to make sure that it would be able to handle that waste if we have to do something out there. It yeah. would be if the town, you know, but that's contingent upon the town putting up another five, ten million to run sewer lines and possibly a pump station out there. So, I mean, that's a whole but, other. Oh, it's not a whole other, no, whole other venue, but I want to make right. sure yeah. that what we're doing now has the ability to take that. Yes. Because it's not, it's not if we ever do it, it's when we do it. Right. We need to make sure that that area, you know, is going to be, because, as I said, the systems that are out there are old and failing. Where are they going? Taylor River. Well, that's, and part of the, uh, the problem that we're facing is, uh, I can remember reading when I first got here the prior facility study, and it talked about how the beach was, would, you know, and the same question, well, how far can this current plant go? And the, it's found it almost a humorous line. They said um, under the present zoning uh, in the beach area, the beach, beach district, uh, the maximum density is seven units per acre. And there, it was based upon heights and setbacks and things of that nature. My calculations over the last four years show 
that we're building out the beach at almost 120 units per acre. Far in excess of what this plant or any plant was, was designed for. So more so than, and you're right, the west side of the town is going to, its day is going to come, but what's already here is we are actively building out the beach and, and, and going to exceed the capacity of this station in a short And we also got to make sure we time. address those other issues of infiltration sure. down there on, on the beach and in other parts of town, mm -hmm. which we know we're having as, as, yeah. as uh, Mr. Preston uh, Alluded to. No, he's, he's correct. Absolutely. Yep. So, thank you. Yep. Rick. Well, I just wanted to say that <clears throat> all through the years when different things were coming up about these condominiums and that, we were assured there were plenty of capacity and that this wasn't going to happen and what you're saying is happening now. Um, so, all of a sudden, everyone looked at it differently before. So, I think there must be some uh, medium that's uh, not what, as dire as what you're suggesting? The change is twofold. If there hadn't been the rule change in 2014, and we were still just talking about the number of gallons per day, we we're not banging our heads against the ceiling. But when they added in the rules, or changed the rules in 2014, to now look at BOD statewide, mm -hmm. the ceiling got a lot closer. Mm -hmm. And that combination with the amount of growth we've had over the last three years is really is what's really driving us. Salinity, yes, it does mess with our, I, I call it the cake mix. The cake <clears> mix <throat> ingredients are changing hourly. As the tide comes in, we see the salinity go through the roof. Uh, not through the roof, but a market increase. Um, when the tide comes in, we see our infiltration go up dramatically. Uh, these kinds of things are what the combination of all of them is what's driving this. Mm -hmm. It isn't strictly just one. So uh, if phase one is roughly 13, what was it, 13? 13.8. Point eight. Uh, so how long is it going to take to uh, use that money and how long will it take to make sure that's been utilized? So, so it would be based upon that schedule that you had before. So I can better understand the question. How long would it take to design and then construct the improvements associated with that? Yeah, I mean, uh, how, how long is that going to take for you to use that money? Yeah, so we can, we can for the schedule we laid out here briefly, it, it, it was uh, designing it in 2018 and constructing it in 2019 to 2020. It's, yeah. Mm -hmm. So, so it would be finished by 2020. Yeah, to, the phase one could be largely completed within a couple of years. Three years. Yeah. So what happens if the uh, voters don't support for phase two? Is are there a lot? Is it a finished uh, package? So phase one is a discrete upgrade to deal with the immediate high priority needs and also some of the capacity issues as well. So that's the immediate. That's the yeah, and then phase two, those projects become more and more immediate as we get further down the road they'll be they'll be more necessary but they're not phase one will do its job and then phase two can come after that so ideally when would you like to see phase two begin so we gave that a five-year window from 2022 from 2020 to 2025 that's the window in which we recommend that phase two be undertaken and completed Okay, thank right. you. So I envision, I'm 58 now, I envision when I'm 63, I'll be sitting in this room having a similar discussion about phase two. Yeah, I've been sitting here for 12 years and it's, all, it's very similar. All Everything yeah. that's been brought up here has been brought up over and over and over again. Yep. And, I, and, I, and I think in the past, we've been able to, through wise management, through uh, nursing the plan along, through the operat operators themselves, doing some very unique things in a day-in, day-out basis, along with some guidance from Wright Pierce and others. Uh, we've been able to nurse it along, but uh, we're calling it out the days of nursing it along. They've expired. Thank you. Bill? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Gentlemen, thank you uh, for your presentation tonight. And uh, I've read the uh, source document the Wright Pierce Wastewater Facilities Plan for the Town of New Hampshire, September 2017. Uh, Director, was there a, a prior wastewater facilities plan? 
There was. The ones that uh, we last read, and um, matter of fact, I asked Mike to probably go back and compare for me in the previous facility study what things were called for then, and are they called for here? And they are. Aeration lagoons were primary. Uh, odor control within the plant, the condition of what the, the staff have to work with. Um, sludge uh, disposal, how we manage sludge. We use a lot of plant water when we receive sludge or septage from people's septic systems because we continually have to turn it. We just keep adding more water to it. It's like a blender with a hose in it. Uh, it's the best analogy I can make. So we... In, in what year was that last study? 2006. Six, right. And one before that was like 1984. Okay. And how much different is this study than the 2006 study? And uh, this, this is for the engineer. Much and, more complete, yeah. mm -hmm. much more um, uh, literally item by item detailed. I, I mean, I've seen their spreadsheet where they came up with this. The number of items in the spreadsheet is just astounding. Um, for them to, you know, to looking at the different parts and pieces. Uh, so this has been a much more complete study, much more uh, focused and defined. Right. And on that last study, how much uh, work, how much money was invested uh, by the town to uh, satisfy some of those needs from the 2006 study, ballpark, if any? I would say two to maybe four million. I mean, I know that, correct me if I'm wrong, right, the head, some head works projects were done. A uh, new dewatering uh, right, press right. was put in in 2012 when I got here. Um, so yeah, some of the stuff has been done, but uh, the bigger items like the new aeration lagoon and the odor control within the plant, uh, you know, we've done things like, because I know we've sat here before, put in new fans and blow air around more often. Uh, you know, we, we kind of, we won't, we don't joke about it, but if you take a brand new copper penny and lay it on Mike's desk or anywhere inside the plant, it is totally corroded like a 50-year-old penny, two days to three days. That's the air quality within the plant. Well, that same corrosion works on the computers that are in there, all the electrical connections that are in there, everything. Yeah, thank you for that. And, and more importantly, it's uh, working on Mike. And uh, I'm very concerned about uh, the health effects for the Mendeno. I know the board is. I know Mr. Welch is. I know you are. And uh, simply sitting next to an electrical panel uh, down there, Michael, is, is not uh, good for your health. And uh, breathing um, those fumes is, is not good. And if it's doing that to a penny, I can only imagine what it's doing to human flesh. So uh, th that is a, a serious concern. I am not an expert on this. I have read the document. I have some questions. I did a little little bit of research. I will reference the meeting that we went to um, in Concord. You were there. Mr. Welch was there. Other department heads were there. Um, and the speaker uh, mentioned value enterprise systems. Uh, and uh, they have instituted that in Hudson. I know that's on your radar. And I know that you've got a lot of other things going on. Uh, and particularly the speaker, and, and there'll be a new speaker soon, uh, mentioned that he was sensitive to the, to the infrastructure cost that Hampton yeah. bears, it's correct Mr. Welch, in support of about 3% of the revenue for the general fund that comes out of this town. And it's an extraordinary amount. We heard of a $30 million pension obligation last week. We heard about a 50 to $60 million depreciation uh, factor that you've identified some of that in this report. And it's a huge, huge um, amount. And it seems like every stone we turn, we look at uh, two other municipalities that are, are, are getting a free ride. They don't they don't have this cost. Um, so th there's uh, a lot of consideration to running this platform. And uh, these uh, are not uh, cries in the night uh, that should be in vain, but taxpayers uh, really need support of the state. And funding will be important. I'll, I'll just have a couple of comments, if I may, please, Mr. Chair. Uh, don't expect the answers, but perhaps to orient um, future um, actions and uh, what I might uh, be looking for as a taxpayer and as uh, an elected leader in the town. Uh, the um, industrial factor where uh, the load concentrations and those types of um, challenges to the system with those limits. And, and another important point of this is, is that it's actually affecting our capability for future growth. Correct. So the performance Correct. of existing businesses that really aren't paying for this, the true share, um, they're also um, exponentially uh, 
taking up future investment, future capacity. And I, I thought that was a salient in this uh, report that um, I had never thought of, I didn't know of, and I, and I think that's a huge consideration um, for this town. Um, the uh, matter of industrial surcharge fees. We've got folks in the back of the room tonight talking about huge problems um, with their um, uh, challenges with, are essentially I and I issues. And when it, it, it leaves their property, it goes into your system. Would that be correct? Yeah. Yeah. So then that's a huge problem you've identified here. So again, by the very nature of, of where we are geographically, it presents a serious challenge. We talked about the depreciation schedule in conformance with GASPA. You, you're on this page here that uh, the integrity of the system to remain that ongoing integrity is about 800000 to $1.6 million per year. Mm -hmm. And, and that, that is money that in 12 years we've spent 2 or $3 million, but according to statistical analysis here, and there's folks with water, and now they're saying people are actually paying attention, um, we're not funding and securing um, those true costs and identifying that. Um, page, uh, well, there's a graph before 2-4, and it's about the influent flow event frequency, and sometimes that, that plan is amazingly taxed. Mm -hmm. And uh, based on what you've said, uh, it's amazing that it works. Up to 13 million gallons a day, correct? Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's an incredible, incredible, yeah. incredible. And I'll get into that rate thing on uh, 2-11. And, and concurrently, as we move forward with this actual expenditure of dollars, I think concurrently uh, it, it's prudent uh, to develop a more sophisticated, realistic rate uh, fee, rate charge, and, and, and do those things and not wait. And, and, and actually, it certainly can be done. <clears throat> you, you folks, I know you're going to drive that, and I know you're going to do that. But it specifically calls apply an industrial surcharge fee for industrial users uh, in treating the higher concentration waste streams. So that's in there. That's important. Um, again, the Hampton Beach I&I &I, um, uh, issues will, will be addressed. Um, again, we don't assess any type of loading surcharge um, for permit holders. The high concentration industrial users have a significant effect not only on the overall facility, but also on the potential future development in the town sewer system. So these, uh, these have broad and wide-ranging um, implications besides um, fiscal um, ramifications. And just to read, um, do, do you have the um, enterprise funds? I gave you the five copies I have. But Could you I just don't. read, please, because it's your department, um, what I have highlighted here and there, just so the public could understand what you're trying to Get to. Thank you. What we, when, about a year ago, when we went, saw the Speaker of the House, uh, what he <coughs> recommended or suggested to us is we get in line with basically 98% of the rest of the communities in the state and operate our wastewater, water, if we had water, uh, through an enterprise fund, meaning that you, you set rates that cover your operational costs, but not only that your current uh, debt that you're carrying for the plant and you recognize like situations like this what your future needs are going to be and you actually um, ramp up your rates to cover uh, pre pre the early development costs the engineering financial things of, of, of putting in these new things so what is an enterprise fund it's good an enterprise fund is considered the best practice to promote and maintain long-term financial sustainability for water, sewer, and stormwater activities. An enterprise fund is a separate accounting and financial reporting mechanism for which revenues and expenditures are segregated and will fund with financial statements from other government activities. Uh, in, in common language, it means, uh, you know, on your taxing, taxed for based upon the, your building value, your tax, your sent a bill based upon your actual usage or your potential usage. Um, direct costs can generally consist of uh, personnel, services, expenses, capital outlay, and our budget and account afford 
in the fund, indirect cost or expenditures budgeted and accounted for in the general fund on behalf of the enterprise fund. Um, and it goes on to, you know, basically say uh, certain things are covered, certain things are not covered. But it is another fair and equitable funding mechanism that takes it off the, purely off the tax base. So that um, we were discussing earlier, if, uh, uh, Tim's in, in touch with another community that has a similar situation that we do. They're a ski community. So they have nobody there during the week, but during the weekends, during the ski, the, the, the flow is huge. Well, even, so the people that have the ski chalets or the ski condos, they actually pay a service fee because we maintain the plan or keep that plan open for them 24 hours a day, every day of the year, waiting for them to come up there. We just can't not have the plan available. Well, that's some of the same things that we experience here. We, you, you build and we maintain a uh, four million gallon per day plant. Today's flows, from, I looked at the report just before I came over, they hovered at two million gallons for the last two weeks. So we're using right now half of the plant, but the reason why we have such a big plant and why it needs to be bigger is the influx in the summer, and that's, that's why you have what you have. Thank you, okay. Director. And just a couple more things, uh, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. And uh, I did some research on some other water uh, treatment facilities, some other districts, and again, I think these are, are concurrent uh, exigencies that must be met in addition to uh, um, business as usual, which is just replace, replace, and replace. Uh, but again, to the um, uh, funding mechanism that we're, I know you're going to explore all those, but I was uh, in a uh, uh, down south, there's a j daily rate per equivalent dwelling unit, there's fixed monthly charges for sewer system capital projects, there's a block sewer rate, and without getting into the details, I know Tim and uh, Mike and, and Mr. Welch, I know all of you are familiar with this, and I, I think it's imperative uh, that we um, start uh, looking at this now. Um, I looked at California um, and some of their uh, drought uh, challenges, and if you use water past a certain time, there's rate surcharges that are steep. There's, uh, like any uh, utility, electric, uh, you can get prime time charges. So I think we need to get much more sophisticated and take this burden off the taxpayers. And the users uh, and the ones that perhaps enjoy profits from their business, um, basically, um, that's, that's uh, a cost they're not paying right now. Correct. And, and uh, I looked at, um, uh, in the Eastern Municipal Water District, I believe it's in Tennessee, um, they publish the annual costs associated with environmental and regulatory requirements. And we're concerned about that, of what new regulatory, and Tim's nodding his head, all of you are, when they pass laws, um, that they're good laws, but they do cost money to comply with. So I've, I've said enough. I don't need answers to those, but uh, I think that the funding mechanism outside of bonding and warrant articles in this value enterprise system is uh, the way to go and get much more creative. And finally, one last thing is um, going forward uh, in terms of recycled water. And uh, time passes quickly. What are we doing with some of those uh, options? And we, we get uh, really uh, progressive in terms of what this plant is going to be. So when we're investing the type these types of money. We just don't look to the, the, the depreciation factor, but we come up with some game plan where we can move the chains and we can actually get environmentally uh, sophisticated and for, for applications that uh, um, can use that, some recycled water um, options. Thank you, Tim, Mike. Thank you, Director. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Uh, first of all, I think the whole town should thank all of you guys for the good job you do down there and keeping that together and keeping it working the way it does. I think you've done a phenomenal job, so thank you. Uh, I read the report, too. I read it once, then I read it twice, then I looked at it another time, and I only had one word, and you deal with it down there. <laughs> that was my impression. Uh, the enterprise thing, I think, is a great idea. It always amazed me how we didn't pay for what we use here. It's crazy. Uh, you know, when you go to the doctor, the doctor always asks you in pain, how is it on a scale of 1 to 10? On a scale of 1 to 10, where would you put the critical need here? Uh, so for number one, for the first phase. For the for the phase one upgrade, I would say it's easily an 8 or a 9. 8 or a 9. And there's stuff there that is really, you've gotten your money's worth out of. And yeah. it's ran longer than it would have at many other plants. Yeah. And I, I think all of us realize that I think you realize it but I think we really got to get that out to the town and make sure that they realize that, it, that it's up that high uh, 
The other thing is, I mean, it's a great report, and, and you know, is this the best way to do it? You know, is there any other way to do it? it is this the best approach that we're taking? Is I think the best approach is facing it head on, determining as a community what we can realistically afford to do, and then doing it. Um, the shocker is to read the 2006 or the 84 report and realize in dollars and cents then what, what you'd think today is pretty inexpensive. I realized in 84 or 2006 it probably was on a parallel as expensive. But this type of work will never get less expensive. Um, and it can't fail, right? There's, you don't have that option. Right. We don't have an option to let the, right to let this plan to let it fail. Yeah. Right. I mean, you have, you know, if you're buying into those those lagoons, and let's say aeration lagoons, they cost five million dollars. It's not like uh, buying a boat and just throwing water in it. It it truly becomes an asset of the town that works for the town every single day. Um, and it's the same thing with the, the other processes, the head works, the, um, all of them combined together. They all work for the town 24 hours a day, seven days a week. I was amazed to see on one of my plant inspections, we went down and I said to Mike, why is this grease coming out of this, this one bearing assembly? And we're in the, we're in the head works and it's, there's three pumps in there. Um, I think Chicago, I want to say they come from Chicago. Mm -hmm. They've been in since 1974, the motors and the pumps that the, that the motors spin. We take them out every, we had to take this one pump out in the last two years to have the seals rebuilt because that was the grease that I saw. Those are the same pumps that have been in place since 1974. On a daily basis, two out of three are always running. Can you imagine having a car in your door yard that since 1974 has been running nonstop? And during the summer, we need all three pumps because at times, like when everybody leaves the beach and before they go out to dinner, the flow into the plant is incredible. It's a peak time. You need all three pumps. Um, I'm sitting there looking at an antique. I said, 74, I was, just, you know, I was a freshman in high school. Oh my God, this is amazing. And this thing is still, they're still running. They're, they're, but if he called me in the middle of the night and said one of them just literally died, yeah, okay, yeah, you're right, it died. So that's what we're facing. We're facing some uh, a very original equipment in here that uh, I'm amazed still still works. And parts of it have been replaced, though, as you went yeah, we, along. Like, that, when were the paddles done there that were done that were reconstructed in Canada? Oh, the, the, I think you mean the Fournier Press, and we got yeah, a new what Fournier Press. What year was Press. that? Uh, about 2012, it got installed. And that was in response to the sewer moratorium with the solids issue. So the, the, just the sludge dewatering equipment, part of it was upgraded to 2012. And that was like, how much money was that then? $1.3 million. The, the other thing that I wanted to bring up is, uh, are you planning on doing a presentation for the planning committee? Oh, definitely. The planning we'll, we'll committee. I'll go to the homemakers. Yeah, I mean, I think that's, yeah. I think that's really important. Yeah. And, and the other thing is, the, uh, the industri industries, and I know you're keeping a close eye on that. You know that that we see something in the paper, and then all of a sudden we, have, and they say, no, that's not true. And right. yeah, but and, I mean, you know, we don't consider they're part of the economic engine that is Hampton. Right. So um, we treat them with respect, and we treat them with we want to work with you. Because if you're successful, we're successful. It's, it's a very symbiotic relationship. But, it, but at some point, there's only so much BOD we can handle. And they recognize that. And they've been working with us. Right. Uh, they've been actually hauling some of their higher strength waste away. So, um, I mean, that's why you saw the 16. On the, the bar chart that you saw, when you hit, peaked at 15 and you saw 16 lower, it was due to some efforts between all of us in this room working with them. And they did their part. To lower their BOD, and so we, you know, we, we knew we had to take some steps to keep it in, in check. We've been working at that, but we can only keep doing it just right. so long. And everybody has 
pay their fair share. Exactly. I mean, you got to treat everybody with respect, but everybody also has to pay their fair share. So is it easy important. enough to do to, uh, like, pe how people bring water in and then how they release it? I mean, can you base the fees that might be charged in the future on what the people's water bill is? So that's how a number of communities do it now, based on your water meter. So in, in Hampton's case, we'd have to get that information from Aquarian on a house-by-house -house basis, but that's what other you know, private water companies do. Yeah, because a lot of people look at businesses and they think, oh my God, businesses, they should pay more. They're using so much more water, when in reality, many businesses don't use a lot of water. True. I know I have a hair salon, and everyone always says, oh, how much water do you use? My water bill is small. It doesn't, it is not near as big as a, a family with four people living in it. Mm -hmm. um, so everyone doesn't use the same amount of water. Uh, residential, mm -hmm. I believe, in many cases, uses more than many, many businesses. Mm -hmm. So I think we have to look at it like that. And right. what, what type of a schedule would we be on for that, Mr. Welch, where we would we start working on something like that? Well, there are various type schedules that could take that into consideration. But what would our timing be to fit in with? We're probably talking a year to a year and a half to get the entire thing done and then we have to figure out, once that's done, uh, whether or not the town will accept it, because we probably need to go to a public hearing, then we need to go to town meeting for a vote. Probably. Yeah. Okay, great. Thank you. Okay. Anybody else? Just so, somebody brought up a point to me at one point, and, I, and I, I think we really should look at this. But if they're paying a fee for the sewer user fee, yeah. how does that work with, their ta with paying taxes? Well, they're paying the fee and you're a residential customer, uh, you no longer get to deduct that from your federal income taxes. Businesses would get to deduct it because it's a business expense. Right. But if, if you pay it through your taxes, you can deduct that as a That's as correct. A, as yeah. part of your thing. But if you're paying it as just paying it as a bill, yeah. you don't get to do that. No. It, it, and, and you have to make that comparison when you do this. You also have to make the comparison of what would be your rate based upon your consumption on a billing rate versus what it is in a tax rate? So if you're if it's costing you, if your tax bill is five thousand dollars, I'm just using a, an example, and you figure out your sewer cost, which is the biggest chunk of change you pay in the town government, not the schools and so forth, but the town, you may end up paying, uh, for instance, a thousand dollars for your sewer cost overall because of the value of your home, but if you had it on a billing rate, you may only be paying five hundred dollars. So, in essence, you get a decrease in your, your, your tax load. Plus, it would come off your property taxes. And the people that are out, outside the sewer district won't be paying anything. Then they shouldn't be, because they're receiving absolutely zero services. Right. And all taxes may be deducted out of the new uh, plan. Yeah, that they're working right. That could very well be. You don't, you don't know. Mm -hmm. Claim of taxes, it's, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, anything else, guys? Do you guys have anything else you'd like to go over with us? or Only that, you know... I know it's not necessarily a vote, but if do you approve of the basically the plan that we want to go, and that is to, um, I know it has to go through a warrant article, but that we want to uh, do a lot of community outreach. We want to do something for Channel 22, and if you're supportive of that, in other words, continue on the direction that we're going. I'll make the motion. I'll second it. Okay, that that we the motion is that we support your efforts in going forward with Phase One Correct. or the whole plan. Phase one. Phase, phase one. one. Okay. Phase one. Right. And uh, at 13, whatever. It's 13 A. Uh, uh, Mr. Welch put together a drafted warrant article at 15 million because, to be honest with you, this is like digging in this old house and we may come up with a, a rotten sill or a, an electrical panel that we didn't realize was also. Sticker heavy. shock means a lot in this town. Right. Mm -hmm. I, I understand. So. Okay. All right, so all in favor? May, may oh, I just have uh, sure. a little discussion, Mr. Chairman? And uh, I, I would uh, certainly support that wholeheartedly, and, and you, you thought it was a good idea, uh, perhaps others, but uh, that they incorporate some of these uh, uh, value enterprise systems, uh, some of these uh, more progressive water uses, the rate charges, the yeah. industrial charge. If we can make that part of your presentation as well. Thank you. So if we incorporate that, thank you, Mr. Excellent. Chairman. Excellent. All in favor? Opposed? Unanimous. Thank, Thank you, you very much. Thank I you wouldn't mind going on a I tour wish. either. I've done it yeah. before, but if it could be on a Monday, hopefully that's that's, that's fine it. with us. I think yeah. it's a great idea. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, I would. Why don't um, any day? We're at your service, so any. I mean, we operate twenty percent.
always works Once best you for collectively me. through the uh, manager's office let us know what day or dates are available and for all of you and, and if it meets three in one day and two in another day, either uh, early right. or late yeah. we're there you know 7 30 to 3 30. well he's 3 30 Five, Five, seven. <laughs> yeah. We were there. Nine, yeah. ten, eleven. I think early in the morning would be good. Yep. yep. So. Okay. Uh, thank you. Thank you.